Hi, this is Dan. Uh, thanks for having me in this really fascinating session. I'm uh, particularly overjoyed at participating with some people whose work I really admire a great deal. Uh, we're talking about trust and privacy in an open education environment. Uh, there's a lot to unpack there, and you've heard some really good explanations from the previous folks who've uh, addressed you here. I'm going to spin a bit off of what they've said and then offer a few things uh, that I'm working on and how they may affect uh, this in terms of my own work. Uh, the first thing, as you've heard from other people, the uh, very important way to start on this is to get our definitions straight. And in some ways, this topic eludes strict definitions because, as you heard before, the notion of open and the notion of privacy, uh, th these are value statements as much as things that can be uh, specifically defined. So what we think of as privacy uh, is very different depending on the context. And when it gets into schools and to a digital age, privacy becomes a whole new thing that we're just starting to get our arms around and think about. Uh, let me start with open, though, because uh, as before, I think that it's important that we define it and uh, think about what the context for it should be. So I think of open in a lot of ways, but uh, it includes things like open source. I'm a huge believer in open source and uh, things like Creative Commons that we publish freely so others can use what we do. Uh, it's not the same as giving things away into the public domain, but it's basically you know, encouraging the idea that others can use the work we've done to expand on it, to stand on our shoulders the way we stood on other people's shoulders to create what we did. Uh, open also to me means uh, open to as many people as possible, uh, if not everybody. Now in a world with a digital divide, you can't be completely open to everybody, but we can be fairly uh, well along on that process while the, this divide gets closed, as I believe it will over time. Open also to me is open in process terms. Uh, I like very much to uh, ask people for their ideas and help along the way. So the open source software system is really an open process, not just open at the end. The code is being developed with many eyes on it, with many changes going on at the same time, and with people all observing what each other are doing as things get checked in and out. I'm working on a new project uh, for a, an online course that will be uh, remarkably more open than anything I've done before in education. We're going to invite people to help us build the thing at some level. Uh, and that brings us to the next definitional question, well, what is privacy? Uh, that's actually pretty hard, and much better people uh, in this field than I am have been very careful to explain we can't you know, totally define privacy in the ways that we used to. Uh, does it mean uh, privacy from invasive government? Well, we all, I think, want that. Does it mean privacy at home from, if we're uh, children, our parents? Well, no. Uh, we have no essential right of privacy when we're five years old. Uh, and that said, even uh, the most strict parents at some level give kids some zone of privacy because they kind of have to, they have no choice. And in a world where the uh, kids are using digital technology, it's becoming increasingly important, I believe, for parents to understand that they're going to see things that they might not want them to see but to let them do some of that at a certain age. Schools are an interesting uh, intermediary here. For children who are not at uh, adulthood, people who are not at adulthood, students, 
there is something uh, that we call loco parentis, which is the idea of uh, the school taking the role of the parent during the time the kids are at school. And interestingly, schools are becoming, in some cases, extremely, extremely controlling of their students when it comes to privacy, which worries me a great deal. Uh, and this is not about open education, this is actually about sort of closed minds where the schools think that they have a right and a duty to watch everything the kids are doing. So uh, this goes to extremes at times. In 2010, a school district in Pennsylvania, which was doing something good at one level by sending kids home with laptops so they could uh, use modern technology, what they did with them, though, the, ed the school system did with them is very bad. They put spyware on them so that kids were being actually observed in their homes via the webcams in the laptops, a pretty disgusting act. Now, that was discovered. Uh, there have been uh, legal actions. Let's hope this is a one-off, but you have to predict that other districts are going to try and pull the same thing at some point. Another school, I believe in Texas, asked kids uh, to take wear devices and it would basically be tracking them everywhere. And parents who discovered this, some of them were kind of freaked out, as they should be. What right did the school have to do this? Well, the schools can make a lot of decisions on these levels. What they need to do is be absolutely transparent about what they propose to do before actually doing it. But privacy in education is uh, remarkably flexible in the way it's applied. And then the topic we're into when we get into online education and open education, it becomes even more problematic because tracking is now the coin of the realm and watching what people do in various online forums and places the, the surveillance as business model is becoming huge. Not just Google doing it, but the education software companies to some extent, and they're doing it in collaboration with the universities. This is quite problematic to me. And I say that as someone who teaches online, I worry about some of the uses to which this data may be put. One of the things that uh, makes me a little more relaxed about this is that in the U.S. there are strict federal rules about what can be done with students data that do protect the students to a, a somewhat greater degree. One of the things that I'm working on that relates to this in a new project of for an open online course is to think about how we might build it in a very open way. Can we do it in such a way that people participate in the building process, in the idea process, in the putting together of course material process. Uh, we're about to start launching this and I'm kind of excited about, about the potential for making it uh, open in a way that has not often been done. I'm certainly not the first to try this, but I think it has uh, enormous potential to work well. Separately on that, we're going to think of the first time we offer this course as a beta test, then use the data we generate and the feedback we generate to go back and fix things that didn't seem to work well and then do it again. I like doing that for several reasons. One is that one of my hopes is that the students themselves, after they've taken the course, which will be aimed at adults, not uh, not students who are in enrolled in school at the moment, is the idea that they will help us to think through what we've done, whether we get it right, and whether we can make it better. They uh, will have some privacy if they choose. They can audit, they will be able to audit the course without giving real names, just a working email address. And that uh, makes me more comfortable about some of the privacy angles. There will be ways they can enroll more formally, in which case uh, their names will be known to us. But we have, we, we're thinking about these processes a lot as we go. Finally, 
I want to think of that in the sense that students really should be collaborators in their education and in the open world, the digital world, there's more possibility for that than there's ever been before. The collaborative nature of the tools that we're using suggests to me that collaborative learning really is the future. And we see in, uh, some new experiments going on around the world that collaboration truly is looking like uh, it's, it's no magic pill here, but it's, it seems to work pretty well. That the traditional format of top-down, which has its value, I love a good lecture, a good talk as much as anybody, but I'm much happier working with other people to achieve some goal. And when learning is the goal, uh, I think we're starting to scratch the surface, but not too much further than that. Finally, I want to suggest that the students of the future uh, in open education are going to be learning throughout their lives. That the traditional dividing line between the uh, student who's enrolled in school until the age of X getting this or that degree or diploma is going to evolve, I think, fairly rapidly into a system where the credential will still matter, I do believe that, but that the lifelong learning will matter uh, as much or even more. That will be a world where I think the students will uh, be demanding and have a right to demand more privacy than they have in the past. And uh, we will have to give it to them or risk not having them as our users and or customers. The last thing uh, I wanted to chat with you about was the word trust. I haven't used it much before, but doing things with integrity and with honor uh, is how you build trust. It's not simply saying, trust me. Trust is earned, not uh, decided. It's we, we have to earn it every time, and it's way, way too easy to forfeit when we make mistakes uh, or in some cases when people do it on purpose. I'm hoping that I earn trust in my work and I think that it's at the core of the open world of education that is coming to some degree uh, and the trust will very much need to be earned. So uh, thank you very much.